So it seems that Schengen is falling apart. And even the European Parliament, Europol TV, are showing videos which show that the crisis is becoming more than even they can handle. And this can only lead to one thing, an upscaling of their reaction. And this is going to mean more military, it's going to mean more police, and it's going to mean the strengthening of the outer border of the Schengen zone. And that's going to have a massive impact on everybody in the EU. This is just another reason why Britain has to get out of the EU so that we can have further convincing control of our borders. We shouldn't be subject to migration allowances. We do take our fair share. We take more than our fair share. This small island over the years has taken more and more and more people from across the world. Yes, it used to have an empire, and yes, people expected to be able to come to the motherland, but it's gone beyond that now. People are coming here expecting to receive benefits and expecting to receive a a warm welcome, which unfortunately, due to the uh, prostitute media and the way that they're being portrayed, they're not getting. You only have to look back at some of the other reports that I've done which show the conditions which these migrants and these immigrants and these asylum seekers, these genuine asylum seekers are having to live in. And it's all because, well, money. It's all down to money. And it's all down to the attitude of the areas and the communities that these people are being forced to live in. Much of the accommodation is very run down and it's overcrowded. And it's done like that on purpose because we have uh, private landlords who are just raking in the money from the government and uh, are just profiteering from the lives of these poor people who are running away with literally nothing from a war that NATO started. And effectively, we started the war in Syria, which has forced them to leave Syria, which has forced them to go through Turkey. Turkey doesn't want them. It forces them on and presses them on into Europe. And Europe is distributing them fairly, so it says. Well, here's a translated clip from Europarliament TV, which shows you just how terrible things are for the European Schengen Zone. And you can watch the original video on the blog page, but I've offered you a audio translation to go with it. So here it is. The boat speeds along the Aegean Sea between Greece and Turkey. On board are NGO workers. Their mission is to save migrants attempting to reach Europe's shores in frail boats. No, relax. No, relax. The situation is quite horrible for the refugees coming over the ocean shouldn't be needed to be here. Europe now needs to wake up. This is not going to stop. It's been going on for a long time. We need to realize that this is not going to stop. We need to make this as safe as possible. In 2015, more than a million migrants transited through Greece to deal with this unprecedented influx. The EU thought it had found a solution. Installing migration reception and registration centers called hotspots. They will be set up on the frontline states of Greece and Italy. But four months on from this decision on Lesbos Island, the first reception centre in Greece is still being developed. But in the view of the director, registration is up and running. We have now two registration areas and that give us the right to register 1,000 people per day, per day for each registration area. That means 2,000 people per day. These figures, however, conceal a different reality. Despite aid from EU agencies, EU states believe they are in serious failings at Greek borders, particularly and the handling of registration, surveillance of sea borders and reception infrastructure. If you don't control the arrivals and the number of the people that they are coming, it's very difficult to provide all the facilities that it's necessary to have for the people. Let's say uh, clothes, clean clothes and... Uh, Uh, food, accommodation, you know, today it's a very bad weather and uh, we don't have so many arrivals, but tomorrow we are going maybe to face 5,000 arrivals. 
For this humanitarian act, a registration isn't everything. It's also necessary to, to welcome migrants with dignity. The authorities are still always focused on registration, border controls, security and administrative procedures. They are not at all involved in the humanitarian side. To comprehend the situation on the ground, an MEP travelled to the Moraya camp. Kashito Kayanga is co-drafting a parliament to report on migration crisis in Europe. In some ways, things are advancing in the right direction. Of course, though, it's not yet perfect. Speaking to the civil servants, to those who are responsible for identification, they have also pointed out to us the weakness in procedure. Greece still needs assistance. The repercussions of the migration the migration crisis has been heavy in and around the EU. Germany, Austria, France, Denmark, Norway and Sweden have asked to restore border controls for a period of two years, putting the sacrosanct freedom of movement of people in the Schengen area. On the Ozorond bridge and linking Denmark to Sweden, police officers have been stationed. From now on, it is no longer possible for EU citizens to cross the border without providing their ID. The word has spread and the human smugglers also know that there are tougher controls here. So uh, the migrants are, are staying south of the border in Germany and so on. At the height of the migration crisis in 2015, more than 2,000 refugees entered Sweden every day. Since restoring border controls, this figure has been reduced to around 100. We are planning for the long, long term uh, that this will be in place. Schengen is in, in grave danger right now because uh, of the inability uh, for the Schengen countries to keep the outer borders. But why is a country which traditionally welcomes in refugees limited only to Syrians who are fleeing the horrors of war? We've done more than almost any other country in, in Europe. The other border of, of EU doesn't work. The idea of the Schengen cooperation is that you have a common other border and if that works you don't have to have uh, the national borders. A feeling echoed by other politicians. In order to boost security you need the reintroduction of internal borders for real specific threats to your border then I accept that uh, all options at the moment are on the table. Wintry conditions have seen arrivals of refugees dry up, but as spring arrives, Swedish authorities are expecting their country's borders to come under pressure again. Rihanna, who came from Aleppo, says there are still thousands of Syrians in Turkey waiting to enter Europe. People in Turkey don't like us. So Syrian people don't want to stay there. They all come to Europe. Araya, her sister-in-law born in Sweden, says Swedish authorities weren't ready to receive so many refugees in such a short time span. People eat grass, people eat things from the walls, people drink uh, dirty water. They are fleeing to just have maybe 1% chance to survive, to give their kids a life. The majority of refugees who enter Sweden pass through the centre to request asylum. Despite the high numbers of requests, this senior officer believes nothing justifies the death of the Schengen area. Of course, we are depending on each other, every one of us. Uh, but the Schengen system, I, I feel, is um, it's profound. So I think that uh, it will take a lot to threaten the, the Schengen system. Member states have issued an ultimatum to Greece to strengthen its borders. A major challenge given the insufficient infrastructure and the huge number of refugees. But it goes beyond the management of refugees to the future of great European project, the Schengen area, which is under threat.